Hello and welcome to Chain Reaction. I'm Peter Hook and tonight I'm going to be talking to the Punk Poet Laureate who started out opening up for acts like the Sex Pistols, the Buzzcocks and indeed Joy Division. He's appeared in adverts with a fuzzy yellow monster and who's now ended up on the GCSE English syllabus and the soundtrack of The Sopranos. As my old boss, Tony Wilson, once said, I'm not the one who will have his life turned into legend in the way that happened to Baudelaire, Verlaine and Rimbaud. It won't be me, it will be John Cooper Clark. The first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, some a place that's still very important to me, uh, Salford. Uh huh. Because you're from Salford, like I am me, from aren't Salford. You? Yeah, yeah. Did it inspire you a lot? Or did oh, you... ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Higher Broughton, uh, incident. What? But you're <laughs> that from... was a posh bit. You, you, I'm from Odsall. That's so, all. Now, that is was... Salford. Did it inspire you the way it did us? Like we just wanted to get the uh, hell out. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's it's sort of it is. It's true what they say, and it's character building. There's what you want, and there's what you've got. <laughs> Isn't they? And, uh, and, that, and that sort of distance between them two is what sort of uh, gets you at it, really, isn't it, I suppose? Definitely. Now, we know it shaped your accent, don't yeah. we? Right. <laughs> but did, did it shape your poetry? Uh, well, in as much as I sort of I got interested in poetry in, in school, which was in Salford, and I got books of poetry out of Salford Library... So, yeah, quite a bit all the way. <laughs> Plus, very important, we had... It was back in the day. I'm older than... Uh, I'm, a, I'm a lot older than Pete. I know, what a surprise that <laughs> is. <isn't it? laughs> but uh, I remember the heyday of the uh, suburban cinema, and we had, like, eight cinemas within walking distance. In fact, the, the, the movies was my babysitter. You know, if my ma was going to town, like... Cheap you know, on a She'd just bung us in the Rialto and... Yeah. Uh, that you know, pick chain, us up, or pick it? us up on the way home. You know, so, I mean, you, so you, movies, really, movies. So got you had me a Hollywood, out. yeah, influence. real Hollywood. That must babysitting. have been at odds with Salford, mate. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's what I mean. There's what you want, and there's what there is outside. You right, know, I mean, okay. I'd have been going to see things like Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin movies. You know what I mean? Which sort of, and Tom and Jerry, those movies that really highlighted uh, what they had in the states. You know what I mean? It was all like technical. Every home had a, you know, a walk-in fridge. Uh, just like Salford. Soda, just like yeah. so, you know. It's called I mean? the backyard, wasn't it? The backyard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So <laughs> the zinc bath. So there was that sort of dichotomy there. You know what I mean? So which I, I think the movies made me very dissatisfied with life as it was. You know what I mean? You couldn't get an hamburger. You know. <laughs> I remember used to see Jerry Lewis eating hamburgers, you know, like having his tea while he was on the move, and I used to think, God, how could... great is that, you know? What I mean? <laughs> we could bore him to death with the we, first we... hamburger place yeah, in but, uh, yeah, Manchester, yeah, yeah. but we won't. I must admit that out of most of the people that I worked with in 1977, I think you stuck out. Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> was punk important to you? Well, yeah, absolutely, it was, because it got me out of man. I think it was our devoto that says, you know, you should be doing punk rock places, you know, because I'll tell you, I was working in sort of... I was trying to make it in clubs, so I was wearing a suit. When I say clubs, I mean sort of young adult clubs like Mr Smith's and... Oh, right, do you I remember, remember, I remember that, these, and these places people. Like that, you know, yeah. Manchester's always been... Working very, men's very clubs. Yeah, working men's clubs, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And Manchester's always been very rich in all sorts of clubs, hasn't it? You know, and... Uh, yeah, I remember the Manchester Arms, you remember that? Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Liston's Musical... <laughs> I and, forgot what uh, we're talking about now. What were we yeah, talking yeah, about? The place, yeah, how I got into p- punk, the punk thing. Yeah, that's it, punk. Anyway, I sort of fitted in because I wasn't, I didn't wear flares and, you know, you didn't have to really do much to be a punk then, did you? You just had to sort of wear non, <laughs> non-flared pants and... The thing that I found uh, most interesting, hair. most well, interesting about you, what you did, right, was that I was part of the gang and we could hide behind, you know, seven of us there doing a gig. And yeah. you used to get up on your own in yeah. front of what was very aggressive and very, what I would term, a hostile audience yeah. then, and you'd pull it off. Yeah, what, like the electric circus? Were you terrified? Like well, it's, them working men's clubs were far more terrifying than, the, <laughs> than any punk club could ever possibly be. Because <laughs> th- there was one thing you could take for granted with them audiences, uh, you know, the pre, my pre-punk audiences, and that was that none of the audience was particularly interested in poetry. <laughs> <laughs> 
So really, when I got when I started doing the punk places, you know, it, they, they were interested in lyrics, weren't they? You know. Well, I, mean, I, I think you punks. can you can say that though, but so, I think that you you're playing down your talent and oh, you're it was still a bit in nerve, doing right? it because yeah. if you look at most of them punk audiences, right? You, I think you'd safely say, especially in 1977 with all the spitting, yeah, oh, etc. Right, that was murder. That, that they weren't right. really interesting, but you used to win them over, didn't yeah. you? And you were a big hit. Because I remember rightly, we supported you on many occasions. Oh, well, yeah, 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 well, yeah, we used the, to be, and really proud of the fact well, that we were supporting John Cooper Clark. What in the Warsaw years? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was, it was, it was an absolute honour. And oh, to watch you do it, and I'm telling you this as, oh. as a fan, oh. was uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it was, it was weird because you, you, it was such a battle to do it, and the fact that somebody could come up and just open the mouth and captivate an audience. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So that's my, my nod to you, mate. Oh, thanks, Peter. Yeah, <laughs> I must support. tell you a story, though. I bumped into a guy <clears> who <throat> was at Salford Tech while you were there. You were behind the counter giving out the power tools. Yeah, the join we did. Uh, and he said that he loved it because he used to get power tools off you, and then you'd never remember. <laughs> and he said him and his dad have now got a very successful builders. <laughs> power tools. On the back of taking Plant the power higher. tools off you. It's called Wimpy or something. No, no, they've done very he well said, for cheers, themselves. Mate. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> remember me at Christmas. <laughs> So when you started moving out of Manchester and doing your work, did you enjoy it more? Yeah, well, I mean, the first one in London wasn't so good for me, I'll be honest with you. It was at the Vortex Club, and uh, they were they hadn't been briefed about what I did, I don't think. But after that, it was great. As soon as I started getting reviewed in the music press, things got easy for me then, I think, you know, because people kind of... It, it, it does help, though, doesn't it? It does, yeah. There's a lot of people that you've worked with that were very important to me as well. Was yeah. one of them. Martin Hannett was the producer of Joy Division. And I think now, I didn't think at the time, because I was very young and just wanted to rock out, but now I realise what a fantastic producer and a great musician he was. Did you enjoy working with Martin? He was a man of mystery. There's no doubt about that. He was a nutter, frankly. <laughs> it was terrifying working with him. <laughs> Because the thing about nutters is, you never know what they're going to do next. Well, it's he, the one thing. It's the one thing all nutters have in common, isn't it? it, it <laughs> he, people can be. If anybody's mad, they're mad in a completely unique way, aren't they? There is no, there is no community of the insane. <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing can prepare you for it. You know and, what I mean? And we're from people. Salford. I'm surprised you could but say the, that. To well, the, well, that's what I'm saying. The one unifying <laughs> quality that every nutter has is, you don't know what they're going to do next. <laughs> So he, you, he was that unique, your experience, Peter? He, he had a unique language. Yeah. He yeah. was like Professor Stanley Unwin. It was, yeah. To me, and you could never understand what the hell he was going on about. But right, he, yeah. he did shape and worked a hell of a lot with you, didn't he, musically? I just don't think that really, in the main, poetry and music <laughs> really mm. are made for each other for, uh, for reasons that it's taken me 35 years to work out. <laughs> 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 but he did as good a job as can be, you know... As, I think it, with my stuff, I think it's mixed, but you like that about your own stuff, aren't you? We, but, you know, everybody else, great, did a great job. Did a great job with Vinnie Riley, did a great job with you guys. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever um, <laughs> wish you were on Factory, then? Oh, I wished I was on uh, Sire. Cause that they cause had, big the, the, was it them that had the Ramones? Yes, it was. That's yes. who I always thought. That's, that's my home. Really. I was, I was reading I that quote In about with you... Basing your, your style on the way the Ramones used to do their music. Well, I did. I speeded everything I had up. <laughs> I, I, I triple speeded every, every poem I had up to that point. That was the punk input with me. I think, I think the energy, though, you know, fired people up, didn't it? Yeah, Because, I mean, absolutely. the big, you know, as much as I had. Plus, they didn't get all the words at once, so they'd come <laughs> back again. <laughs> did they think they were better than they were? Yeah, true. So, of all the bands that you've played with, right... Ooh, blab, you're not going to ask me my favourite, are you? Yeah, yeah, I am, oh, yeah. Oh, crikey. You don't have to say me, it's all right. <laughs> I mean, because the, the, the repertoire in the early days... I mean, Bebop Deluxe was one of the ones that you started. Oh, with, yeah, they weren't great punk at fan. all. I know, but I was a great fan of theirs. We a big fan, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Bill Nelson. But they were nothing like punk, were they? No, but, I mean, great band. They were a weird audience. I was trying to check them out, because it was my first. that was my first tour of, like, big halls, you know. 
And they were just sort of punk was really finishing people like Bill off at the time. Let's be honest, but there was a few. That Came were back sort quick, of Bill, because if you look at was... bands like XTC, yeah, yeah, they I know that what you far mean. Apart, were they? I know what you mean. Plus, he had that. He had a slight glam rock sort of edge as well. So he had a few Bowie clones in the audience, but mainly it was, you know, young business people or... So you, you've, you've, you've <laughs> people who, you've people who look like Thunder Thumbs, you know, Thunder Thumbs <laughs> in uh, Level 42, what's his name? I don't, I don't mention the guy at a Level 42. That, obviously, <laughs> <he's> <laughs> your, <laughs> obviously, your art, you, he's <laughs> Dr Moriarty to your <laughs> show. Yeah, as soon as the guitar goes that way, yeah, yeah. then that's, that's yeah, me yeah. over, okay, I'm afraid. Sorry, sorry, Pete. So you didn't answer I'm the question, sorry. though. What, what was that? What, the <laughs> favourite favourite bands? Yeah. There were so many great bands. The, Richard Hell and the Void. Oh, Fantastic, you know, yeah. Rock Pile, you guys, the Buzzcocks, the Fall. Because, I mean, a lot of lyricists... In fact, in... I'm still working with the Fall. I can't shake them off. <laughs> <laughs> One of our big breaks uh, as a group, as, as New Order, after the uh, demise of Joy Division, was um, supporting you on a tour of New Zealand and Australia. <laughs> you weren't supporting We were me, supporting were you? you, mate. Were you? Yeah, yeah. I know you were financially, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just about to bring that up. Have you got the 50 quid that I lent you in 1982? But I think, again... That's right. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, that. Did you um, enjoy going across to different places and playing like that? Different countries? Did you find the culture... Did it lend itself to the poetry? Yeah, I loved it, yeah, really did, especially Oz. <coughs> Tougher audience or easy? No, not really, not for me. No, they're pretty, you know... They're all Irish, aren't they? They, they like all that sort of... The, the, the crack and all that. It's, similarly, I go down Great in Ireland, you know what I mean? I think for the same... <laughs> I think it's I... a bit of a generalisation, I know, but... You know, you, why do, not? you do have to be careful, though, don't you? But anyway, I'm going to move on. No, I'm, I'm in favour. It's not racist if you're in favour. Oh, that's not... <laughs> Yeah, they're better than us. <laughs> they're better than us. Well, there you go. <laughs> Crowd pleaser. Now, you ended up living with one of my icons. Two of my icons, actually. You lived with Nico and John Cale, didn't you? She must have been an interesting lodger. Well, it was bags of room, and it was, you know, she's no, tr <laughs> she's no trouble. Uh, <laughs> Now, I know that that's not true, because, you know, I don't know for the people but, but, who... But, but when John Cale was... He, he moved in for a while while he was producing a record of hers called Camera Obscura. Imagine that, wild. having two-fifths of the Velvet Underground living yeah. in your house. I mean, it was, it was always how, funny how, with... How the, cool is that? ..with Nico, cos she was always really grumpy. I always... I you, she was one of the most grumpy women I've, I've ever met in my life and I've been married to a few, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and the, the weird thing was is that it wasn't until I saw the film of The Doors when uh, Nico used to be with Jim Morrison in L.A., and then she ended up with the uh, new in, <laughs> in Presswich. And know. then it sort of made the a only bit of sense, way really, up. about... <laughs> <laughs> so was that um, yeah, right. an artistic relationship? I mean, I know it was in a dark period for, for Yeah, well, we had of things, you, you know... Ob common objectives and and that and uh, but we tried to run a tight ship and everything at home and it was uh, no it was cool it was great great, was having, it, her, great one... having her about she was in fact she was a battle of lefts <laughs> <laughs> she was but I'm easily amused you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about work ethic because what what in, uh, always impresses me about you is is that you seem to have a very very strong work ethic. You never stop working, do you? When you say working, uh, Peter, uh, I, I, I have always done gigs in that way. I've always worked, you know, but it's only lately that I've really... Well, in the last, say, four years, that I've really started writing proper again, you know what I mean, really? As a, why, why is in, that? In, in, a, in any kind of conscientious way. Why, why is that? I don't know. I think the 80s was a bad period for me. I didn't get the inspiration to write because it, it felt like a sinking ship, didn't it? You know, any, anything to do with punk in the 80s. It was kind of a millstone round your neck for a while. Well, I, think, it, but it I suppose it, the, you, the, the interesting thing for me is, is that I always wonder, do you think people like me and you could do something else? No. <laughs> no. no. Can't, can we? No. I keep threatening the missus, you know, so I'm going to retire. She goes, oh, my God. Retire? Actually retire? Well, that's, I could retire. But would, do, would what, you, when you say doing something else, what do you mean, another yeah, like job? A, yeah, another job, yeah. Could you imagine yourself back at Salford tech handing out the power oh, tools? Oh, God, no. <laughs> 
No, no, I couldn't imagine. Although it was a cushy number. I said that was one of my better jobs. If you Come to think of it, I was happy then. <laughs> <laughs> What's your worst job then, mate? Worst job? Um, worst job? Welding. Oh. Is that why you have the glasses on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, have you ever caught a welding flash? Uh, yeah, my brother used to do it. Yeah, you can't do it, can you? It's, it's like being smacked in the air. Yeah, it's terrible. And, and then for three days after, it's like you've got sand in both eyes as the outer epidermis of your retina grows back. <laughs> so that was a rotten job, yeah. Yeah, welding. The, the interesting thing is about commerciality because, you know, people like us that started in the punk days, you were very idealistic. We were all very, you know, and very narrow in our sort of approach to who we wanted to appeal to. Uh, and I found that with age, that sort of disappears. And you realise that when you're doing something that appeals to people, you want it to appeal to as many people Absolutely, as Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because obviously you're very famous for the, um, the sugar puffs. Oh, yeah. I'm also the voice of Domino's Pizza these days. Well, it's great, cos it sort of brings... Uh, looks after mealtimes, doesn't it? You've got Absolutely. breakfast covered, you've yeah, got yeah, uh, yeah, dinner, yeah. all you need is a, a brunch-lunch yeah. yeah. type thing, if there's anybody out there that needs uh, John for lunch. Did, did, you get, <laughs> did you get a load of free sugar puffs? Yeah, as many as... Yeah, of course, can have, yeah. can have a couple of boxes. In fact, I went right off them. I don't... <laughs> You know, you think I could possibly get sick of these. They're delicious, you know what I mean? But there was always some hanging around on the set, you know, and it was like, what are you going to do, you know? It's just like mine. Was but, you know, it, the, the, the odd thing so for both of us... I've, not, I've never, ever bought Well, you're in luck, cos we've got a bowl here. <laughs> um, so, I mean, did you get a lot of money for this adverts, mate? Not as much as I, as I could have got, I'm sure about that. I didn't, I didn't have nobody, uh, nobody back in my corner in them days, so it just sounded like a lot of money. I needed money all the time, so I, no, we all I do suspect. That, don't we? But mind you, it was silly money compared to what you get now. I think they've got round all them loopholes. They could, I mean, you could have bought an house with a, an advert like that, couldn't you, uh, back then? But now they have this thing, what they call a buyout. Oh, right. So you don't get royalties. Because back then, you used to get royalties. Every time it was shown, you know, you got paid again. Did, did, did you do it twice, or did you just do I it? I did once? three. Three of them. Yeah, the last one was terrific as well. <laughs> <laughs> They'd really started paying money for special effects by that oh, time. Oh, man. Because they were so popular, you know. They told me, they said, we've never sold so many sugar puffs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm kidding you. And so they had all these Tom and Jerry-like graphics, you know. There was one where the only monster's gardening, you know, he's got one of them concrete rollers rolling the lawn out. And I get flattened by the roller, you know. I mean, nice one. So, so there was this, like, rubber flattened out image of me, like... Then in the next, you know, the bit of slick editing, and I just sort of jump up and, you know, like Tom and Jerry type violence that doesn't have any consequences, nice one. you know. <laughs> So terrific, is, is the honey monster advert. real? I was really proud of them. <laughs> the honey monster, I can't really tell you his name, actually, I don't he's think. sworn to secrecy, is it like the stick? But he's been in a load of Cliff Richard movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he was in Summer Holiday. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he doesn't do the, that. The uh, young ones. I think he was part of a dance troupe. Yeah. Going to blow it now, all yeah, these yeah, lot yeah, thought yeah, he was yeah, real. You know, well, Summer Holiday, yeah. wonderful oh, life. Oh, is he not real? <laughs> no, no, oh, God, you better X this, otherwise somebody will kill me. <laughs> well, when the Honey Monster writes his book, mate... Yeah, you know uh, what I mean. I'm sure it'll be fine. Now, the... But who the... did they have when, when I lost the gig? They got uh, Kevin Keegan, didn't they? <laughs> soon as you'd done it, mate, I didn't... Uh, never had a lost it, that. completely lost never, it. Yeah, as soon as you'd gone, that was it for me. No more sugar puffs. Started after that, didn't you, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> Keep up with my healthy image, yeah. We're all f full of muesli in Salford. Um, now, I hear, which is, was quite a compliment, I thought, that you, you're now added to the GCSE syllabus in school. Yeah. Is that to teach people how not to talk? <laughs> 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 yeah, they put it in spilling about ten years now, isn't it? I think it's, it's I don't think it's in anyway. It's I wanna be yours, won't it? Which is a sort of romantic, harmless piece, no swearing in it or anything. But people seem to like it. It's the wedding favourite of the century, actually. It is to wedding. You know you know what I mean? Let me be your vacuum cleaner, breathing oh, in yeah, your yeah, dust, yeah, blah yeah. blah blah. Right, so it's sort of love thing, you know, quite a bit soppy, quite light hearted and what have you. But it's become the wedding favourite. It is to weddings. What always look on the bright side of life is it's a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put it out as a wedding number. 
it wasn't top door or anything like that, but I went round sort of punting it out with uh, with all these other poets that were on the syllabus as well. We're going round all the town halls in England and Wales, and uh, and anyway, one of the kids in the catchment area of that GCSE period was uh, Alex Turner of the Arctic Monkeys, who, uh, cool. who who then got into my stuff and, and started dropping my name in interviews all over the place. Very nice of him. So right, now, as you. like you, I've got a completely pan-generational audience. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Did, uh, did, did it make you feel old, right. though, being taught in schools? So, <laughs> it's it's one of them things, no, you know, like Yeah, oh but God. you know what? I was so... I, I thought, <laughs> this is proper success when they're ramming my stuff down their reluctant throats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought, yeah, well, you great, know, it might make it. school slightly that's more it. interesting. Well, everybody says they liked it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so the Arctic Monkeys, are you a fan? Yeah, I love him. You like yeah, him? Because, I mean, his, his lyrics, he's, he's one of those, like, Mike Skinner. And also, I must say that the way that he uses his words reminds me of, oh. of you. Oh, And yeah. uh, Alex Turner is very... I mean, I always found that your poems were very direct mm. and got you, you know, held your attention, whereas a lot of rock and roll is quite double meaning, yeah. shall we say. Well, the words aren't the main thing in most of it, let's face yeah, it. Yeah, it's all know. about the music, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about Control. Did you enjoy that? What doing that doing yeah, that the movie? Film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was in and out to be honest, Peter. Yeah. But you yeah. had the wonderful accolade of being able to play yourself, right? And I had to have an actor. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did you get away with that? Wait, it's a, there's a timeless quality, isn't there? To you, like a Peter Pan. Well, yeah, uh, that's the beauty of never looking any good in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having that, mate. You look fantastic. <laughs> so, evidently, Chicken Town. Yeah. Did, did that surprise you when they used it on The Sopranos? Well, absolutely, it did. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, I, I was made up about it, yeah. I mean, I was already a massive fan of the show, was following it, you know, avidly. As I say, after The Simpsons, that's the best TV in I the world. I could see you in The Simpsons. Yeah, me too. No, that's that's sideshow Bob, Pete. <laughs> no, no, I, I want to see you. Because you see I'd some of the cameos, that. Oh, that, don't you, in, in it. Oh, my but, God. But, you know, I wouldn't get I'd that you were that. a real... Because in, in the notes it says that you, you look on Homer Simpson because he reminds you of you. It, oh, absolutely, it does. It's my mouthpiece. If you want to know what I think about anything, you know, it's probably been, it's probably been dealt with by Homer Simpson. <laughs> now, tell me this. We're going to talk about things that you, uh, you, you should have done in your life. Should right. have done? Yeah. Is there anything that you should have done in your life? <laughs> this is one of them, what a chump I was, kind of moments, isn't it? <laughs> what regrets? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, is there any opportunities you let slide? You oh, wish? millions, I'm sure. Millions. It says here, Chemical Brothers. Chemical Brothers, yeah. <laughs> really? There's a prompt. Why, why, did, why did they... They asked you to do a track with them, didn't they? I would have done that. I, can't, I mustn't have heard about it. No, you didn't. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have done it. I've got I'd the notes here, mate, and Listen, you turned like, it down. I'm like a tart with no knickers. I'll work with anybody. You know. I've got the notes here, and you've turned it down. And I, I must admit, you know, one of the great things here in these notes, these notes, if you ever read them, and it says uh, you regard yourself as slightly out of time. A retro charmer. See Adamant. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, Adamant. If I said that, I'm uh, proud of myself. No, but I put my glasses on and it's Adam Adamant. Oh, that's right. Adam Adamant. <laughs> hey, but Adamant would have been all right. I could just as easily have said Adamant. Prince but... Charming. Yeah, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Adam Adamant, remember him? Yeah, it was Adam a great Adamant. series. Yeah. In case you don't know, Adam Adamant was played by Gerald Harper and it went out in 1966, didn't it? It was about uh, an Edwardian or uh, Victorian uh, gentleman sleuth or something. It's quite bizarre. Whose arch-enemy had had him frozen in a block of ice, which wasn't, <laughs> which wasn't then discovered until they were redeveloping that part of London in the 60s. You know, and then they kind of melted him out and he comes out in this alien world, dully and... Uh, is great is anybody old enough to remember that? Yes. Oh, you're very kind. You're very kind, sir. <laughs> so, the Chemical Brothers. Do you want me to get on to them and yeah, see if we can salvage do. Yeah, please do. I love you? the Chemical Brothers, and whatever they want me to do, I'll do it. <laughs> Even if they start wearing animal costumes? 
The price is right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what are you up to now, mate? Are you, you said you were happy you were writing again. Are you going to be loads, recording? Or? Loads of writing um, and, yeah, loads of gigging as well. I'm, uh, I've, I've got a Zurich in Switzerland next week. I've got... Do you get to Europe a lot? Yeah, I was in uh, and Scandinavia. I was, uh, last time I was abroad was in uh, Finland. Bloody hell, Finland. I'm not being funny, but I was there for a night. One travel day... Gig day, travel back day, right? You'd think, oh, that's not long enough to see a foreign country, is it? <laughs> 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 I, was, I was up at eight o'clock the next morning saying, do you think we can bring the fright forward? <laughs> <laughs> Any chance? I'd like to take Nick Griffin there and show him a society oh without any black people and say, is this what you want? Is this what you want for England? You can. <laughs> did, did it inspire a poem? <laughs> oh, many. <Yeah. laughs> and it was the midnight sun as well, Peter. It was, it was round-the-clock sunshine, right? So it was like the afternoon at 4am. I was starving. But nowhere was open. <laughs> they do it by the book, you know what I mean? Nowhere was it. They do believe. speak very, very good English. I, I, we did a gig there. Well, recently. they have to. Who's going to bother speaking Finnish? <laughs> 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 but anyway, the That's best place pleasure. I've been lately, oh. though, was, and I've never been in my life before, Guernsey. <laughs> I never thought sacks dodging slobs. You I know bet you never thought you'd say that when you were on the Vortex. It was t- <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's like Johnny Rotten doing them butter commercials. I know, I know, isn't yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> I know, I, I know you know, but you know what? The audiences were good. Yeah. Oh, they were. Yeah, it was. It was fantastic. I thought I'm being an excuse to get the cravat out. You know, I've always, <laughs> wanted, I've always, I've always wanted to see Guernsey. Well, if I but go, I'm going to borrow your oh, cravat. Have you never, have you ever been? No, I've never oh, been. It's blinded. Yeah, it's it's funny, we flew in there like gentlemen. It, we were on this little propeller plane, two-engine propeller plane. Me and seventeen other people. It was proper flying, you know. And you go in there, and there's this. There's this, like, boozer on the runway, at the side of the runway as you get there. Beautiful Art Deco little boozer with the terrific lettering, Guernsey Aero Club. And I swear to God, as we come in, one of them raised his gin and tonic. <laughs> I thought, oh, this is club class boy. I thought, yeah. there's my big regret. Yeah, it was Stop big... moving to Guernsey <laughs> 25 years ago. We couldn't ago. have afforded it. <laughs> Listen, I, final question. What would you have on your tombstone, mate? Ah, tombstone. Uh, I did have a great tombstone. What was it? Oh, hi. Eke non perturbo. <laughs> right, which is Latin for what me worry. <laughs> I'm going with that. John Cooper Clark, thank you very much. Cheers, Pete.